Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ahabat tafillah Continuing on in our study of advice to Ahlul Sunnah we reach the sixth point from the advice <clears throat> and this is a continuation of the fifth which is talking about the issue of uh, hajr, of boycotting and the Sheikh prior to this mentioned that boycotting is mashroor, you know, that it's something that's legislated, uh, you know, and permissible to use at certain times, meaning that it's not ala itlaq. And Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah detailed that quite a bit when he mentioned that this is something, the concept of hajr is not to be used all the time. And nor is it to be used the opposite of being gentle and lenient all the time. That there should be a balance, and the balance is based upon the particular scenario, the particular uh, time period, the particular uh, the strength of Ahl Sunnah and the strength of Ahl Bid'ah at the time. If Ahl Sunnah is few in numbers, but then they're practicing uh, Hajar of the people this is probably not going to have a, a positive effect. In fact, the people will look at them and say, hey, they just cut off from the Muslims. They are just some extremists. Um, and all the other Masail, and basically it comes down to, as Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah was mentioning, uh, looking at the Masail and Mufasid. That's the, the, the simplest way of putting it, is looking at the harms and the benefits of implementing hajr against an individual or against a group of individuals or whatever the case scenario may be. So here now the Sheikh is going to talk about the reasons it is mishroor, the reasons for legislating hajr and when it is uh, permissible and give us some more details in regards to this issue and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. I mean, so he says it is appropriate for the one considering the use of hajr boycotting to take into consideration the legislative guidelines of the uh, imams of Ahl Sunnah that the Imams of Ahl Sunnah have mentioned. These guidelines, after careful examination, will clarify in a precise manner who is to be boycotted and who is not. And from these guidelines, so now he's going to tell you what some of these guidelines, guidelines are, and he mentions uh, approximately five. And what this is, is this is giving you some tools so that way you have a Sharia based for those people uh, who are even concerned about these issues, and especially for those who are, you know, seeking knowledge and so forth, that they should have some, uh, some bawabit, some um, criterion for implementing hajr, and criterion to know about the issue. So that way, if you see people implementing it in a false way, you at least will be on the ilm and basira. You will be on knowledge and insight into the issue, and either you can uh, command the good and forbid the evil and tell them, hey, this is incorrect and you can do it based on knowledge or at least you cannot participate, you can avoid participating in something which is greater mishroor, you know, something that's, that has no benefit and is not legislated at the time. And so what this does is this gives you the tools. And so first, he says the first guideline uh, pertaining to hajr, uh, meaning the one, uh, and this is uh, plainly, uh, pertaining to the hajr, meaning the one who is implementing the boycott, meaning, for example, if I have a problem with you uh, and I say that, you know, I'm going to cut you off. So this is talking about the one who is cutting off the other person. OK, uh, it is recommended for him to be firm and effective to the degree that his boycott leads to the reprimand of the one who is in opposition. But if he is weak and ineffective, then he will not achieve the recommended objective of boycotting, even if it is done with the correct intention. However, if the boycott is employed in light of benefiting the Hajar himself, in that he fears that sitting or associating with this individual will affect his deen, in this case he has the right to boycott. So here the Sheikh is talking about, in fact, two scenarios in that one scenario. He's talking about the situation of the person who's implementing the boycott, who's boycotting someone else, and that they should do it with correct intention, their niyyah, and as the Prophet said, in the ma'amal bin niyyat, verily actions are tied to the intentions. 
and also that the <clears throat> the cutting off someone is done also it could be done for the benefiting the person who is being cut off who's being boycotted so as I gave you a scenario, I have a problem with so-and-so and it's a religious based problem. I say, hey, you know, I've been warning you about, you know, this menhaj of Akhwan and Muslimin and you keep involving yourself in these things, Achi, you know, I'm not going to speak to you anymore, you know, and maybe this person really respects me with good ties. So then they are affected by this. So then that's one of the times it would be mishru'. It would be legislated because this person, this uh, in this scenario, this is actually affecting uh, and benefiting the one who is being cut off because now they're boycotted and they feel this. Uh, they feel the effects of that, and then they say, "Hey, you're right. Thank you, Jazakallah Khairan. Not just for boycotting me, but Jazakallah Khairan. Now I kind of I see what you're saying, and you've given me proofs from the book and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So I'm going to come back to the Adilla, and I'm not going to be with those Jamaat." This is just an example. Uh, and so the hajr can be used to benefit uh, different people, either the one uh, who is cutting off the person, and this could be for their maslaha. How could this be for their maslaha? How can this be for his benefit? Well, maybe he's fearful that he'll be affected in his religion from this individual. So sometimes, and this is why people, they don't understand and they don't like this concept at all and they throw it around because they feel hey this is another Muslim how can I not give him salams or or not be around him and eat and drink well we have a precedence in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we see that that was a Sabila Mu'mineen it was a Sabila of the Salaf al -Sadi, that when someone was from Ahl Bid'ah or someone you know had maybe major sins and they were doing them openly or whatever the case may be for various reasons uh, these this Dawabit of Hajar was being, uh, this criterion was being implemented, meaning that Hajar was being implemented for various reasons. And sometimes it could be to protect your your own self. Maybe you're fearful. So as we mentioned, maybe you love someone, your Muslim brother or sister very much. You love to hang out with them. You benefit from them, but they have a particular sin that they do openly. You know, maybe he's even a, a Talib al -Ilm, but he has a girlfriend. This is not un, unrealistic. And you fear that you with this person by sitting with him even though you're gaining some benefit you feel like there's a great harm because it keeps bothering you that he has knowledge and he's got a girlfriend openly he's got this girl he's you know or or whatever he's got some sin that's open you know or he's got an aspect of bidah he might have a janab of khair a lot of good but then he's also got some bidah that you just can't and you feel that you're going to love him more and it's going to affect your heart and then you're going to begin to either join in the bid'ah or at least be accepting of it. And so this is one of the reasons why it may become mishroor, may be legislated for you to avoid being with that person because you're fearful that it's going to affect your religion. It's going to affect you in your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Sheikh then he says, respectively, boycotting is legislated for the benefit of the one applying it. He has the right to boycott anyone whom he feels accompanying them or associating with them will be detrimental to his religion. It is also legislated for the benefit of the one being boycotted if it will bring about his reformation and rectification. Boycotting is also legislated for the benefit of the Ummah in that they abandon some of those who oppose the Quran, the Sunnah, and the methodology of the pious predecessors in order to avoid actions similar to theirs and there are textual evidences to substantiate every point mentioned here so this is very important to to uh to know and have an understanding and have the wabit when you are uh dealing with this mess because it's a mess you've got to remember that this is an issue of religion so you need to have uh ilm and 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 faham. you know you need to have some understanding some knowledge and understanding of when and how to practice this aspect of the religion before you practice it. Because what we find is most of the time people are doing it based on their hawa. They just cut off someone. It could be because they blind follow, him, they blind follow someone who told them to cut him off. They blind follow, uh, it could even be a scholar. 
who has an issue with this individual. And it could be a knowledge based issue or it could be an individual. It could be a personal issue between them. We don't, you know, it, it depends on the, the mess. It depends on the issue. But the point is, is that you as a practitioner of Islam, and if you are involved in this issue, you want to do it based on the Elm Wabasira. And I think we're going to take our time and go through this. So we will stop there. And then the next lesson, we'll talk about the second point, because this is uh, some important, uh, it's a very important topic that deserves uh, haq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.